man. I, 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 if it's alright, can I start my fire seed? Just want to thank you forever and ever and ever. I wish I had somebody for all you done. Blessings and glory. Sing a song, Lord. I 
need you to fix my heart. You have my permission to do what is. sacred space called sanctuary. God, we ask you to have your way. Speak like only you can. Speak, God, to lives of change. Speak, God, until chains are broken. Speak, God, because we didn't come for any other reason but to hear a word from you. Because one word takes and makes the difference. God, we give your name the praise. We give your name the honor. It's in the matchless, majestic name of Jesus we pray. Yes. And all God's people that agreed said amen. 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 I believe somebody didn't read your Bible this week. So we're going to make sure you start it off right. Amen. Amen. Acts, the 12th chapter. And we're going to read from verses 1 to 16. Amen. Acts, the 12th chapter, verses 1 through 16. No matter what copy of the Word of God you have, if you wouldn't mind, amen. Let's quote it and read it together. I may drop out, but we'll climax together at verse 16. Amen. If you have it, say amen. amen. Let's read. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. Come on.
your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. you prayed about it, prayed and God's going to meet your expectation. Tell him one more time, say, neighbor, neighbor. you prayed about it, prayed about and God, God is going to beat your expectation. Thank you so much. for Somebody don't know when to shout. I'm going I'm to say that again. Somebody don't know when to shout. Cause I know there gotta be at least one person in the room that you done been praying about something. I wish I had somebody. And, that, and I just want to just give you a preview. God's going to meet your expectation, but going to give you greater than you ever asked for. I wish I had someone. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of God. He going he gonna to give you greater than you expected. The Bible says that all of a sudden, this, when you look at this text, it's so amazing to me uh, because what happens is a death happens that makes folks get happy. Y'all going to say something after a while. Um, the text says, it talk, starts off that in this text, it says in verse 1, it says James was healed. So a death gets other folks excited. Can I just help somebody in the room that there is somebody that wants you dead? How oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. Man. The enemy wants you dead. The enemy wants you out of here. Um, and, and they're excited about your funeral. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Um, they be gone. And the, the Bible says that James, um, he dies and they get excited. I just wish I had somebody that understood that the enemy really wants to kill you. Um, but he won't work, it won't work. Touch your name and say it won't work, it won't work. Um, and, and the real reason is because you got to watch who you connected to because you could die for the wrong reason. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Um, you got to watch who you're connected to because when you're connected to the wrong thing, you could end up dying for the wrong reason. Um, the text says that he dies and, and all of a sudden because he's connected, um, Peter is connected, he saw, um, they saw that it pleased the people. Do you not know there's some folks um, that people will get pleased when they see trouble happen in your life? Y'all ain't saying nothing. Um, people get pleased when they see trouble in your marriage. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Trouble in your finances. But I wish I had just one person in the room that could testify that I'm grateful to God that he does not worry about what people say is because it's got to happen on his time. Oh, touch your name and say it ain't my time yet. It ain't my it ain't my time. It may look bad, but it ain't my time. It, I know you what you want to plant for me, but it's not my time. Yo, oh, to God. He says, he says, all of it, thank you so much. He says that all of a sudden they it see that it pleased the people. And so they arrest, God help me, they arrest Peter. I wish I had somebody. They arrest him. And when they arrest him, it's so amazing to me that sometimes the enemy, what he means for evil, um, really will turn around for your good. Um, somebody got to understand that the enemy has been having you locked up and have been trying to arrest you, arrest your marriage, arrest your finances, arrest you in sickness. He's been trying to arrest you. But look at the text. It says it was at the, the season of worship of unleavened bread. 
Oh, somebody got to help me. Yeah. See, because this the thing about unleavened bread, the, the worship of unleavened bread, the time of worship, you could not kill anybody. Y'all ain't saying that. You could not kill anybody at the place of unleavened bread. Um, you can, the unleavened, the worship of unleavened bread. And so I need to tell somebody, the enemy thinks he's going to kill you. But the problem is, you came to worship. Oh, y'all ain't saying that. Um, the, problem, the problem is, he didn't understand that the only thing that's keeping you alive is the fact that you're in worship. I, I dare you understand that there's power in those two seats over there. Because when you get to worship, y'all ain't saying nothing. A word from y'all ain't saying nothing will save your life. I, 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 sometimes I, I had a pastor, my bishop was Bishop H.W. Falls, and, and people didn't understand, but sometimes I would go and I would kiss his hand, and I didn't have a funny bone in my body, but I kissed his hand because I understood that every time I got to worship and heard a word from him that saved something in my life. He always saying that. He saved something in my life, and he, they wanted to kill him um, but it was, they couldn't kill him because of worship. Oh, God, watch this. They couldn't kill him because of something that couldn't rise. God help me. They, they could not kill him um, because of bread that did not have yeast in it that could not go any farther. And so I need to tell somebody when you feel like you're stuck and seem like you can't get up and can't get out of this, I want to tell somebody that's listening to me that that is the right season to come to worship. Because worship, um, when the enemy wants to kill you, you have to look at what you're going through and say, but they came to worship. Yes. He got up on the scene up He says, all of a sudden, he, he finds himself in a place um, um, where he's locked up. And while he's locked up, it's amazing to me, because while he's locked up, he's locked up, but they can't kill him. Can, can I just say something for somebody? Don't worry about what the enemy doing. It ain't going to kill you. Oh, Y'all don't know when to shout. Don't, don't worry how the enemy is trying to tear your life up. It ain't going to kill you. This sickness is not a to death. I want to help somebody. It ain't going to kill you. It's going to frustrate you, but it won't kill you. Uh, Tech says that all of a sudden they're in this place. Um, but... They are at a place where um, they are worshiping something that ain't going nowhere. And what the problem with that is, is the enemy's upset because he understands that you ain't going nowhere, but you're still worshiping. And the problem with that is the reason why he attacks your life and attacks your finances and attacks everything about you is because he remind every time you praise him on unleavened places, it reminds him of his previous job. Y'all ain't saying that. Every time you praise him when you're broke, when every time you praise him when you're going through, it reminds him that he got fired and you got hired. Y'all ain't saying that. It reminds you that every time you lift your hands when you're feeling bad, it makes him say, you know what, I hate them because they didn't mess up but a whole lot, but I messed up one time and God kicked me out. Y'all ain't saying that. That's why he's mad at you because you mess up every day, but the Lord gives you grace and mercy. And he messed up one time, but you dare not come into God's house and lift your hands and start blessing. God, I don't know if I'm talking to the right crowd, but there ought to be somebody in this room that says, I don't care how unleavened it is, I will bless the Lord at all times. God help me. He says, he said all of a sudden because this ain't the first time he's been in trouble. Y'all ain't saying that. And the Bible says that they put him um, inside um, of the jail and put him inside of the prison. And the Bible says that they put him where there's four quadrants. Y'all gonna say something after a while. He, he puts him in a place where there's four quadrants, and a quadrant is four. Y'all ain't saying it. every quadrant. So there's 16 men for one man. Oh, God help me. There's 16 men guarding one man. And I don't know if that helps anybody, but sometimes.
sometimes you don't even understand how powerful you really are. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying nothing. You don't understand that you, you, how powerful you really are. Sixteen men are watching one man. But the problem is, he says to himself, I know the last time I looked up, he got out. God help me. I don't know if I'm talking to the right crowd, but somebody in here, when you go through your next prison, next time you go through your next storm, you ought to look up toward heaven and say, I know I got 16 things that's up against me, but if the Lord did it before, oh, he'll do it again. That text is amazing because this is not the first time he's been there, but this time, the devil thinks he's better. And I don't know about you, but every it seems like every time the devil comes after you now, it's getting worse and worse. It's because he knows that God brought you one time. He brought you two times. And somebody can testify, he keep on, y'all ain't saying, bringing me out a thing that I can't handle. Because the text is so good because it says, it says all of a sudden he's at a place where the people of God are praying for him. I don't know if I'm talking to the right crowd, but there ought to be somebody that thank God that the church is praying for you. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You, you ought to be grateful that you got a bishop and a first lady that in the midnight hours when you sleeping, they praying for you. Something you ain't talking in here, but you don't understand. You see what you in, but you don't know what they prayed you out of. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You see what the trouble you in, but thank God you got an angel that's hurt. Y'all ain't saying nothing. The text says, the text says there's, there's intervention, um, then there's intercession, and then there's a place where they do not ask for, um, they, don't, they do not ask for help. But Jesus shows up. Um, sometimes in your life, um, God will start doing a thing for you. And you have to have people that will intercede for you. And then there has to be an invention. And then there is a place where you got to have godly people around you that don't ask for your permission to pray for you. Y'all, I'm going to say that again for somebody that you got to evaluate your friends. Um, that you got to have somebody that's so in tune with your life that they don't have to get you to tell them their problem. Um, you just say, I know you're going through something. And if you will help me preach, just grab your neighbor real quick and say, you sat in the right place because I'm not going to ask you to pray for you. You just look like you need prayer. God help me. You just look like you need something. And the praise of the thing about me is I just believe when I pray God is going to turn something. Oh, all around the text. The text is amazing because they do not ask him. Um, you never see in the text what Peter sends a note email or anything to them to tell um, them to pray. But the church start praying. I, I want to help somebody that's in the room that the devil might be playing with your mind that you, you think you don't have to go to church no more. I just want to help you. You need church even more. Y'all ain't saying that. You need to be at Bible study. You need to be at every teacher's meeting. You need to be at, come on, y'all ain't saying y'all get quiet on here. But you need that. And the reason why you can't make it without it is because you what, what happens when the church gets to praying? Oh, I'm going to help you. I'm going to just put it out there since you want to look at me crazy. It's all right. I'm from Texas, so I've had folks look at me crazy before. So the truth of the matter is, all of a sudden, you got to realize that just you praying does not make God show up. I'm, I'm going to say that again. Y'all didn't get it. Um, just because I pray as the apostle does not guarantee that God's going to show up. But he does say, what, two or three? Y'all ain't saying nothing. A touching and agreeing on the same thing. There will I be in the midst. So I'm going to tell you, there's power when you come to church. I got I to gotta come to church. I got I to gotta hear a word from the Lord. I, I got to get with some folks that say, I, my situation is not my end. The text says that all of a sudden these, these men, these men and women are in a house. And if you look at the text, um, I call her... 
come Mary Mark, y'all ain't saying nothing. Because it says her surname was Mark, y'all ain't saying that. So we're going to take it to church. See, her name was Mary, and we'll put her last name Mary Mark. And so Mary Mark is having a prayer meeting, y'all ain't saying nothing. And I want to tell you, that's the problem with the church, is we don't pray no more. No, that, that's the problem with the church. We don't pray no more. And the problem is, one of the things we don't pray for is our leader. Y'all ain't saying that. You, you got to understand that the more you pray for your leader, the more God will start working in your life. The more I pray for my pastor and my bishop and my first lady, the more God will start working in my life. Because watch this, if you're not a bastard, you're a child. And if God blesses the father, y'all ain't saying nothing. he got to bless the children. Y'all ain't saying nothing. But look at the text. The text says that all of a sudden he's in this place and he's at a place where he's praying. Um, they're praying for him, but they got people watching him. Can, can I help somebody? Yeah, there's people that's watching him. And I, I don't know about you, but you ought to be happy when folks start watching you. <laughs> Watch me work now, let me quit. Watch me later. Watch. You got to understand that you got to have enough people watching you for God to get the glory. You, you don't like the fact that you got problems in your life, but the truth is today, I want to tell you, God is just building your audience for his glory. God is just building his audience so that he can get the glory out of your life. So, so the best thing you, you see is they're sitting there Two of them watching him closely. But the church is praying. I'm going to say that again. Two of them are close to him. But the church is praying. I'm going to say it one more time. I, two of them are close to him. But the church is praying. Can, can I help you here? I want to say something that might mess you up, but um, pray for me anyway. The problem with the church is the church states that immediately when the church started praying, that Peter got delivered. Y'all ain't saying that. But there's sometimes where you got to understand the power of your church. Somebody say the power of my church. The power of my church is that when the church started praying, they didn't get Peter out of jail, but they got an angel out of heaven. <laughs> Can I help somebody in the room? You might not be able to get out of what you're in, but God will send you an angel. I wish I had one person in the room that can say, I may be still in it, but God done sent me some help. Uh, you thought it was, you thought, you thought it was just somebody looking like him, but that's your angel. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He says he sent him an angel. Watch this. The text says that when he sends him the angel, um, because you got to be able to be in something and still praise God. You got to be, because I know there's at least one person that can say I'm still in it, but God can trust me to praise him. Somebody that's still, somebody can say I'm still in this problem, but God can trust me to give a wave offering. <laughs> Somebody can testify that I'm in it, but I still will give him a dance and I'll still give him a Shabbat. I'll still raise my hands and say, I will bless the Lord at all times. The text is amazing because it says that all of a sudden now he's in prison. People do not get him out, but they're still praying. And what happens anytime? An angel shows up. I, I say this in my, my leadership meeting. Sometimes we never use our angels. Y'all ain't saying that. God has designed your life to have an angel in your life. You ain't saying nothing. And sometimes you got to say, Lord, I need you to move my angel. In the morning, y'all see, I hope you're ready to nod your head because you say, I ain't been doing that. You need to wake up in the morning and say, Lord, send my angel before me. Y'all ain't saying nothing. That will straighten out some stuff. Some of y'all angels need Jenny Craig. Y'all ain't saying that because you ain't never used your angel. But after the day, I dare you wake up in the morning and say, I, Lord, send my angel before me. 
send my angel, send my angel before me. And so he says all of a sudden, he's sitting there, um, and the angel shows up. And one thing about it is when you when you have God show up, it's something amazing that happens to the church, is that, that the church don't even understand that God has already showed up. <laughs> I'm just going to help somebody in the room. <laughs> you praying about it, but you don't know God's already working it out. And I just need one person in the room that will testify that I'm, I don't, I'm not going to praise God because he did it. I'm going to praise God because he's on the way. God help me. I'm not praising him because he already made a way. I'm praising him because he's on the way. I'm praising him because he ain't did it yet. But I know sooner or later, he's going to work it in my favor. I'm text says that all of a sudden, this man, he's in prison. And then God does not take him out. But he sends an angel. Somebody shout an angel. angel. Sends an angel to him. And the angel has to hit him because he's sleeping. Can I help somebody in here? When you know that, that you got a church that's praying for you, let me help you. You can go to bed. Y'all ain't saying that. Somebody know what I'm saying. When you got a leader, y'all ain't saying nothing. That's praying for your life. And you know you in good standing with the church. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Because there's a difference between a bastard child and a real child. I'm talking about you in real standard. You you in good relation. You paying your tithes and you're doing what's God. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You doing all what's right. You in good standing. So you know God has to be doing something on your behalf. So when you know that you're doing what you can do and you got an angel, you can go to sleep. You know that you're in good standing. And the text says that the angel kneeled down and hit him in his side. So when he hits him, he wakes him up. And what I like about the text is we just saw that there's 16 men that are watching him. There's 16 men that's watching him. And, and all of a sudden, you see the angel show up, and the angel does not touch. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He does not touch uh, the, cuff, the cuffs. It does not touch um, the cuffs that's on his hands. He does not anoint it with oil. What the Bible says, all he said was get up. And I knew what you see in the text is the chains don't come off when he spoke the word. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Somebody got to understand um, that a word, you got to use it to get something to happen. Every Sunday you hear a word from Bishop, y'all ain't saying nothing. If you don't do nothing with it, you're going to still have the chains. But the Bible says that when he heard the word and responded to the word and got up, y'all ain't saying nothing. The Bible says then the chains fell off. Can I just help somebody in the room until you start doing what the man and woman of God are saying over your life? Your chains are going to stay in your life. But I wish I had just one or two people that say to themselves this morning, I'm going to listen to the word and respond. I thought your neighbor and say, it ain't nothing wrong with saying amen. It ain't nothing wrong. It ain't nothing wrong. He, all of a sudden now, he's, he's, he's stood up. But he had two people sitting next to him. That's 14 other people that are watching. Y'all ain't saying that. But what happens? Why don't the commentary say anything about them? I, I know their job was to keep it. Y'all ain't saying that. Their job was to keep him locked up. But when he got up, they couldn't do nothing but look. Can I help somebody in the room? That the enemy may be around you and want to destroy you. But when God raised you up, they ain't going to be able to do nothing but look. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. That's all right. And you got to understand that when God does this next miracle in your life, 
the enemy may want to, to take you out, but he all he's going to be able to do is look at you. And I dare you just lift your hands real quickly and say, I'm looking, I'm looking. But you can look at me because this is the last time you're going to see me broke, y'all. This is the last time you're going to see me in pain. This is the last time you're going to see me in bondage. This is the last. Y'all ain't saying that. The last time, the last time, the text says, and I'm almost done. He says, he said, all of a sudden there, they are watching him, but they can't respond. <laughs> Can I help you with your next enemy? Um, they're going to see you, but they can't touch you. <laughs> oh, God, help me. Your enemies are going to be around you, but they ain't going to be able to handle you. And I wish I just had one person that the enemy been on your back, but I want to tell you this time, he ain't going to be on your back. He's going to be looking at you. <laughs> The text says that all of a sudden he's in this place because the church is praying for him. And we're grateful this morning that Jesus is omnipresent. That I'm grateful that he could be at Mary Mark's house and be in prison at the same time. And that, that's why every time you come into God's house, you ought to want to touch him. Y'all ain't saying that. You ought to want to give him praise. Because you want him to not only show up at church, but somebody in this place, I prophesy to you early and tell you that while you're praising him at church, he working your situation out already right now. That says that the angel did not get him out, but the church was praying. And all of a sudden, he leaves. Uh, he leaves where he is. And if I had time, I could dissect the text, but I ain't got time to say all that this morning. The text says, that he says, now I know. I wish I had some now I know people. Now I know. That the God... He's able. There, there ought to be somebody in this room this morning that ought to be able to see I know now. I've been through a lot of storms and I've been through a lot of rain yeah. yes, sir. And, but uh, I know yeah and I just need somebody in the room that can say through all I've been through the devil came to make me give up because I I know because I know story says that church, the church was praying and while they were praying I feel like that while they were praying yeah while they were praying all of a sudden the same thing that they had been praying for showed up. I need to help somebody. You got to watch who praying for you. Let me say that again. You got to watch who praying for you because there's two types of pray. There's P-R-A-Y and P-R-E-Y. And some fools will tell you they're praying for you. And the P-R-E-Y, which is what birds do to animals. And I need to tell somebody, you better understand, they were praying, yes, Lord. And while they were praying, I feel good here, while they were praying, I feel my help now, while they were praying Peter showed up and if there 
anybody while you were praying. Yeah, oh love, I've got a witness. While you were on your knees. Showed up there 
if he had a die, somebody think you're already dead. But I proclaim to you, you're not going to die. You're going to live. Touch your neighbor by the hand and grab your neighbor and say, neighbor, you're not going to die in it. You're not going to die in it. You're not going to die. You're not going to die. Yeah. And the text said, they came to the door. Can I help somebody? God will make the same folks that didn't believe have to open up a door. The same people that said you wouldn't make it, you make them open up a door. The same person that said you won't make it because you got a child out of wedlock. God is about to open up a door. Say it. Yes, sir. Somebody said you won't make it out of this trial. You won't make it out of this heartache. Yeah. But you got to understand we've been made in due form. But joy come in the mouth. Is there anybody in this room that don't mind testifying that I've had doors that's been a cold in my life? But I believe God is about to turn it around. It won't always. You won't always be like this. Yes, sir. I got to leave you now. But the text said the same people that had him bondage. And now the people that should have been praying are not believing that God has brought him out. But can I give you a word from the Lord? And that is, let your haters keep on looking. Let your haters keep on not believing. Because when God do it, when God do it, when God do it, whatever they said, it was for his glory. You don't even get mad at people when you know it's for his glory. You don't get mad when they hate on you because it's for his glory. Yes, Lord. And when he saw them, yes, sir, the Bible said, Rhoda came there, told him, come. They come to the door and let him in. But I need somebody that don't mind testifying that the Lord, y'all ain't saying nothing yet. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord is waiting not on you, but enough people to see you, see you in your snow, see you in your rain. But I have. Give me 
one second and grab you a neighbor by the hand and grab them and rock them. Rob and shake them and say, neighbor, you don't know the hand you hold. I made it out of it. And if I made it, you're going to make it. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. Yeah. Yeah. 
out there, somebody just look one more time, and I promise you I'm going to sit down. But I want you to grab one more neighbor, and if this neighbor won't talk to you, I give you permission to move across the aisle, but tell that neighbor that this next praise is not because I see it, but it's because I've been praying for it, and I believe that God's about to give me greater, so watch me praise him in advance, watch me praise him in advance, watch me, watch me, watch me, yeah! the beginning. Amen. If you come back tomorrow night, we're going to have some church up in here. Amen. I believe miracles about to happen. I believe before I leave this city, God never brings me into a city unless he's about to give a miracle. And I need somebody to understand. She don't understand what she just did. See, a run makes God move. When you can't dance, you ought to have a run. When you don't know how to put them up and put them down, if you don't got to dance, let me show you what we do. Put your right foot in. Put your right foot out. Put your left foot in. Shake it all about. Do the holy shuffle and give God a shout. Let me do it for you. This is how I look. Just open your mouth and give him a holler. Come on, holler for your greater. Come on, holler for your greater. You can pray it about it, holler. You ought to let the redeemed of the Lord. Oh, say so. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I get somebody to move this real quick? I want to pray for some people. Amen. I hear the Lord just for a second. Is that all right, Bishop? Hallelujah. I just want to pray for some people. Hallelujah. Eva Shakona.
Just get in the aisle real quick. You're going to help me close this sermon. Around for me. 